though today I'm fully immersed in the tech world, I was actually pre-med in college. In fact, when I stepped foot in college, I had one singular dream. I wanted to get into a top med school and become a doctor. And to do that as my practical self, I knew that I had to follow a few key steps. I had to get good grades, a good MCAT score, and get my research published. So when I stepped foot into Wellesley College as a freshman, I did everything I could to get my foot in the door at a research lab. And thankfully, a few years later as a junior, I got published at a top MIT neuroscience lab. In this video, I'll be going over how to get accepted into a lab, the process of working in research, and finally how I got published. So let's take a step back and see how I went from being this freshman thirsty for research to a published MIT researcher. Whenever I talked about doing research in college, the number one question I got was, how did you get into research at MIT? And my simple answer was, I just found a listing online and applied. Opportunities don't just come knocking at your door, you have to go out and seek them. And this applies not only to research, but also jobs and internships. And of course, things like referrals and connections can help, but they're definitely not required, especially when it comes to research. So the first step to get into a research lab is to find a lab that you're genuinely interested in. And for me, there were not a lot of opportunities at Wellesley that I was excited about, but I found out actually through a Facebook post that Wellesley students can do research at MIT. So I followed the link and found the site for MIT Europe, the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. And after realizing that I'm eligible to do research at MIT and can even get credit for it, I browsed the projects they had available. And there were so many, from bio and neuroscience to engineering to business research, they had it all. So I picked up my favorite opportunities and emailed a bunch of researchers. And I did my fair share of research on Wikipedia and the lab's site and wrote about why their research was fascinating to me. I also added in some personal touches as well, describing how, for example, Parkinson's disease affected someone in my family and how I want to do something about it. Alternatively, if you have a professor you really like, you can reach out to them individually. Or if you have a friend who's working in a lab, you can ask if they have any openings available. Once you reach out and get a response, the next step is the interview. In my case, they're mostly chill. We just go on a tour of the lab and they discuss the research that they're doing. And throughout, there will be opportunities to ask questions for you to continue to show your interest in the lab. Other interviews might be a little bit more formal with a behavioral style interview and for technical positions they might even do a coding portion. For this part of the process the most important part is just doing research on the lab and having genuine thoughtful questions about what they're doing. And hopefully after a few days you'll get into the lab of your dreams and this is when the journey really starts. So 12 hours a week spent in the lab in addition to your four standard classes can be a lot. And personally, for me, that meant in those first few semesters of college, instead of spending my nights partying it up in Boston, I was by myself in a dark windowless lab room. It also meant that I had to choose between playing for the college squash team and doing research because I knew that I couldn't do both. So there are definitely lots of sacrifices and compromises you'll have to make to devote enough time to produce high quality results in the lab. And in terms of the projects that I worked on, I started off by learning how to fabricate these little micro electrodes that would be later implanted into the brain. And these electrodes have a strand of carbon fiber that's just a few microns thick that is threaded through a series of tiny glass tubings. This was incredibly intricate work and would take around 20 minutes to make each electrode with only around 5-10% to of them actually working out at the end. And that following summer, I actually worked full time at the lab for pay. I investigated the efficacy of this plastic called polyethylene glycol, PEG, to coat the carbon fiber tip before implanting into the brain. So for this project, I got to actually design and carry out my own experiments. And even though it was pretty tedious, it was cool because I felt like my work finally had more meaning. And for the one and a half years following that, I continued doing similar things. And after taking CS classes, I also started working on analyzing the data using MATLAB. And from this whole experience, I realized that the process of research can be really tedious and sometimes defeating. Especially as an undergrad, it's possible that your work can feel very repetitive and mundane, where it feels like your only purpose is to be an extra set of hands to carry out a particular task. But after stepping back, I realized I was actually learning so much through this experience, whether through the work itself or the mentorship that I was receiving. I learned about fabrication techniques like how to use epoxy or a soldering iron. I learned how to design studies that actually mattered. 
And I learned the importance of patience and detaching myself from the results of my work. After more than two years working at the lab, I came to terms with the fact that my research wouldn't get published. We had to start over multiple times and our paper submissions just weren't getting accepted by journals. But to my surprise, one evening, junior spring, I got an email from my mentor telling me that our paper had been accepted to a journal and that that one summer of research on the PEG plastic was a crucial part of the study. And just like that, I became a contributing author to the paper. And hard work and commitment are key parts of getting published, but so is luck. Labs aren't always cranking out papers and not every project gets published. The lab has to be well funded so it doesn't get shut down. And they need to give you the independence to work on something beyond just pipetting so your work actually gets recognized. So you have to be lucky enough to join the right lab, the right team, right project, all at the right time. But if all those things align and you just stick with it, then you should be on the track to getting published as well. So you may be wondering, why do people care so much about being published? Well, beyond just helping with admissions, it helps lend credibility to your work. Hours in a lab can be really taxing and sometimes it'll feel like your work is amounting to nothing. So getting published gives that sense of satisfaction and proves to both you and others that your work was meaningful. That being said, not having a paper published doesn't mean that your work doesn't matter. The whole point of doing research, whether you're a student or full-time, isn't about getting published. The whole beauty of the research experience is about all the different learning opportunities that are out there. So even if your work doesn't get published, if you're able to present it, say, at a poster session or in your college, that'll have a similar impact. So take this all with a grain of salt, and as long as you're getting that experience, you're on the right track. And that's it for today's video. If you have any other questions about my time at MIT or about research, leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.